Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So today's video, we are going to be doing ESO PvP tier list for the High Isles DLC 2022. So if you're unfamiliar with PvP or maybe just hopping in for the first time, this video is definitely going to be for you because I'm going to go over what classes are meta and what classes just need a little love. So let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video um, I'm a bit of a social pariah so I just started doing this whole Twitter thing uh, this month so go follow me on Twitter uh, that should be floating uh, around the screen somewhere in post-production also I stream on both Twitch and YouTube currently so if you're following me on YouTube not Twitch and if you're following me on Twitch not YouTube that's unacceptable you need to go subscribe to both please thank you very much anyways so let's hop into the tier list now I'm going to be rating these based off of my personal 1vx experiences and also a different category where i'm going to be looking at these with a group play thought in mind what utilities they bring to a group what zerg busting potential they have i'm not talking about zergs in general i'm talking about small ball groups four or five man groups and you and your friends um even in battlegrounds for example and one last thing a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who continue to support me man i really appreciate y'all support i really do if you want to help support me well all the links are down in the description below so let's do this all right so based off of the classes we have here 12 different classes right i can't believe the, this game's been out eight years and there's technically only six classes and um yeah you can play either magic or stamina and quite frankly in high isles with all the hybridization changes that kind of feels like they're all the same class so um zoss if you're working on a new class a uh, cough cough a daedra class uh race um that would be awesome now would be the time to bring that out maybe next patch because uh we're bored okay or at least a new weapon skill line maybe some unarmed combat maybe you know back in the morrowind days i don't know just just gives a little something to play with all right all right so here's our tier list the very first one um i i put these up randomly of course when we talk about my favorite one first which is going to be the dragon knight so dragon knight this patch boys let me tell you about all of the nerfs now i'm a dragon dragon knight main if you guys do not know here on the channel i'm my main magica uh dragon knight magic sorcerer so i have a lot of experience on dragon knight now last patch it was definitely a meta like no if hands or buts about it but guys there's been so many nerfs nerfs to engulfing flames uh they nerfed the healing from burning embers by half they nerfed the combustion passive from 0.5 seconds to 3 seconds which absolutely killed this in pve i mean if, if we're being serious i feel in pvp too and man like magic just does not feel the same but but there is a mythic item in the game as you guys well enough know called the oaken soul ring and if you see my build video uh nope this corner pointing this way if you see my build video on that it's the most broken piece of crap build you've ever seen it's super toxic super fun super easy to run super easy to attain now with the open soul lead changes so we're not gonna be looking at specific builds though we're gonna be looking at the dragonite uh, as a whole what a typical dragonite would be uh, mostly two bar setups if you are running the one bar setup that i have this is an absolute meta class it is no if ands or buts about it i'm hitting 20k crit whips consistently um but if you're running a two bar build i'm actually going to toss dragonite down into a tier because it does have a lot of group utility as well um you know with uh with talons and you know it's, it's, it's just a tanky class in general i mean in group play solo play it does everything pretty well but it's not like the best at everything or, or anything for that matter it's like a jack of all trades master none type thing so for that reason this patch i'm gonna give dragonite uh an a tier, uh, an a tier list fuck an a grade there we go all right next we're moving on to the stamina dragonite so for my reasons with Magic of Dragonite, stamina feels eerily the same. I feel like the class plays exactly the same as Magicka. You pretty much use the exact same skills, just the different morphs. And when it comes to uh, differences between the class, I mean, I, I don't feel a difference between the two, honestly. Um, the only advantage that Magicka may have over stamina is that you can sustain a little bit better i feel like especially with ash cloud where it costs you like nothing if you run like the uh, infused cost reduction for that heal it's a massive aoe heal but i mean stamina and magic just feel like the same class like more often than not when i come up against a dragonite i i can rarely tell whether it's stamina or magic so for that reason i'm gonna give it an a all right next we're at everyone's favorite proc targ class the nightblade man 
Nightblade has plagued ESO. He has plagued my dreams. He has plagued me. I still have PTSD, man, from from Chlorian Prox. Like it's just still to this day. All right. So I have no sympathy for Magblade. The changes this patch is that you guys now have to marinate in the dots like the rest of us. It's been eight years. It's been a long time coming. Thank you, Zoss, for making the Nightblade's experience what the rest of us have to without being able to suppress any dot pressure. So. With that being said, it still doesn't seem like there's any um, degradation in Night Blades whatsoever. But we'll be ringing the Stand Blade first. Now, depending on how you play the Stand Blade, uh, when it comes to solo content, um, Stand Blade's uh, very top tier. It is a tough class to play and do it effectively. Um, but it offers like zero group utility whatsoever. This is a solo dolo class. You, you have zero utility for your group. So we're kind of doing the average of the two. So if you're a top tier player, it is definitely an A tier class. I don't know if I would call it meta per se, um, but if you are a top tier stand blade, you're probably meta, but the fact that you have zero group utility, uh, we're also gonna bring this down to an A tier for now. Now, this is the magic counterpart. part. Um, to be honest with you guys, uh, when it comes to open world content, I believe the stamina Nightblade, in my humble opinion, is just way better. It has a lot more survivability, it has a lot easier burst to attain and for your to get out jail free card i just think your survivability after your burst is incredible on stand blade now for the mag blade eh you know kind of not so much and we're looking at this objectively like the meta way to play the class we're not talking about like sap tanks i, I wish that was still a thing or brawler blades or anything in that nature but i do think magica um while offering like zero group utility um you can bomb on the magic and blade so the only reason i'm not putting this in like a c tier right now is because for the fact that you can actually zerg bust with the magic and blade up pretty effectively it might add uh, especially with the new occult overload passive which i swear by by the way guys and your champion points if you don't know what occult overload does and now whenever you kill someone with the stats effect it's a 12,800 tick to anyone around them so you can pop a lot of people like zits so just for that reason, I'm probably going to put the Mag Blade in the B tier just because there's different ways to play it. It's not very standard and metadized like the, the, the Stand Blade is. I mean, pretty much any Stand Blade I've ever seen is a proc tard. I mean, let's be real. Next is the Magica Necromancer. Now, the Magica Necromancer, guys, is hands down the best group play Zerg busting class in the entire game, um, especially again with the champion point system changes to a cult overload you know that thereof now when it comes to solo play on the magic necromancer is a very very tough class um there's not a reliable stun you have a totem you can toss down that pulses that does a fear um you can possibly run the the masters inferno staff to get a flame reach cc knockup but this class definitely lacks cc and control i mean you're really good at just taking pressure and just kind of standing in your, in your boneyard right but uh, unless you're playing this as like a zerg busting bombing build it really doesn't work out solo i mean it's very hard to have enough burst damage while being solo while being survivable and while able to get everyone in the proper scenario that you need them in right in order to get your burst combo off so if it wasn't for that uh, it still offers i mean there's a lot of group healing you know we're gonna toss this in meta class because quite quite frankly guys um you provide a, a metric crap load of healing if you're playing this in group play. This is a group play class. That's just the way it is. You can play it solo. I mean, but you're going to get, you're going to be enabled so much more in small group play. And you can easily, if you have a three man group with a, a, a necro bomb, you could easily wipe out 12, 15 man zerg like, like just like that, like no problem. A well orchestrated group, you easily could. But doing that solo, uh, not so much. So. Even though it does have its solo shortcomings, I'm still going to put this in a meta tier, like honestly. All right, so off to the Stamina Necromancer. Now, um, it is a good Zerg busting tool as well. Um, there's a lot of Stam Crows that can uh, bomb just as well as the Mag Crows. But the thing is, if you're a Stam Crow, you really don't offer like any group healing or really group utility. Uh, um, it's mostly, you know, Dark Conversion, Spin to Win, Play Break, you know, you know whatever. So just for that reason, I'm probably going to put the Stamp Crow and Solo plays a little rough too. I'm not going to lie. So I'm kind of torn between A and B tier um, at this moment in time. I'm probably going to put the Stamp Crow in. Oh man, this is tough. This is tough. We're going to put this in B tier. Um, I know you guys are going to play me in the comments for this, but quite frankly, from a solo standpoint, you know, maybe I'm just not playing the Clash right. Um, I just think Magic is just better. 
okay? And again, it doesn't offer any group utility. So if you disagree with me, please let me know down in the comments. I'm sure you guys will have no problems because everyone loves the tier list. All right, so here we are to Sorcerer, my other baby from a, my mother brother from another mother type thing. So this is what I started out playing um, was Magicka Sorcerer. Now Magicka Sorcerer um, has went through amalgamation of changes. There's been a buff to Crystal Weapons, which has made this class. Honestly, I played my Magicka Sorcerer kind of like a STEM class. Um, it's it's the most hybridized thing you'll ever see. I mean, I'm even using a, a Bound Armaments. And also crystal weapons, which is the the stamina morphs of that. So I mean, is that magic of stamina? I mean, I really don't know. Um, I do feel like the days of stacking max and magicka sork are, are kind of over. They're, they're not necessarily gone. In in duels, um, it's still really strong. Um, but the thing is, guys, that they nerfed a lot of the the overpowered sets that came with the magic sorcerer. Um, um Draugrkin, for example, Draugrkin was like the sorcerer's bread and butter. And that's how you got your consistent, like, sustained damage out. Yeah, crushing Shock, Draw Arkham Spam, you know, with, uh, which, with the charge weapon, you get all the status effect. And that was kind of um, the, the way you did your damage. Now, since they, they've nerfed that set, guys, I uh, I don't know, man. I, th this class just doesn't feel the same to me. Um, it's not particularly good at 1vxing. Um, it's good at getting a kill and streaking a couple times and getting out. Um, but when it comes to like group play content, unless you're like a healer, you really don't offer much to your team anyway, besides a, a AOE streak. Yep. Um, so for that reason, I'm probably going to put Magic of Sorcery in B tier because quite frankly, you're going to be, if you want to play Magic of Sorcery effectively solo, I mean, you kind of have to play it like a stamina class in order to have burst. Now, I'm not saying that it's not viable, but I'm just saying like from a group play standpoint to, to what you're able to pull off in the class, I'm probably going to put Magic of Sorcery in B tier. Uh, actually, no, we're going to put it in C tier because, I mean, there's no one good one bar builds. I mean, there is, but you can just, you can just smack the pit like that. And it, it's just a very underwhelming class. And to be honest with you, um, the play style of the Magic of Sorcery just needs to be redone. Um, there's not enough burst for the Magic of Variants. The whole play style, unless you're on point, like t targeting people in a big group. I mean, it's so hard to get your burst off. It's very easy to, to, to mess it up. So for that reason i'm probably gonna put it's it's dang near trash the more the more i'm thinking about this man i really just want to toss this in the trash here but i don't want to toss any classes necessarily into, yeah we're gonna stay with c for now all right next is the stamina sorcerer now while pretty much having zero utility for your group as well with the magic of sorcerer your burst potential is a lot higher and the play style is kind of the same um on the magic of sorcery yeah you can man up a little bit so the stamina sorcerer is all about doing a drive-by you get your combo off you streak away a couple times you dark conversion back up to full wait for everything the, your crystal weapons bound armaments you know dawn breaker whatever you have to do you spin to win and, and that's kind of like your rotation right um i feel that the stamina version of the sorcerer has a lot more opportunities where the this the actual mag sort just doesn't um and again doesn't offer any group play um, I've never been like, oh man, that, uh, unless you're a bow sork, all right? Look, the bow sork is a uh, pretty OP, all right? But that's that that requires a very specific build, and we're not going to be going over specific builds. We're looking at classes in general. So, um, from a general standpoint, when it comes to group play, solo play, and what you can get away with, I'm probably going to put the stamp sork in B tier. If you made it this far in the video, guys, please do not forget to like and sub. It really helps me out. Don't forget, I have a Twitter, I have a Twitch, I have a YouTube. Go sub to everything. All right, thank you very much. All right. So let's let's talk about uh, we're we're gonna talk about Templar last. All right, so I'm going to go on a tangent. I'm gonna give you guys a heads up here in about a minute thirty seconds. I'm going to go on a tangent about Templar. So let let's talk about Warden for the time being. Okay, so let's talk about Magic at first. A uh, Magic Warden guys um, has like zero solo play. I'm telling you right now, you don't have a reliable stun. You have Jack Squat. You just don't you just don't have anything, man. Um, when it comes to group play, yeah, you have like Northern Storm, a, a lot of group healing, uh, which is pretty strong, you know, kind of like a buff, debuff and type thing. There are these brittle builds, which are pretty incredible. So we're not going to be talking about a lot of Warden, except that it definitely needs a stun, a reliable CC. The whole nerf of our Arctic Blast had me in tears. So I, I, I don't know what the identity of this class is per se. Like I get it, it's a really cool class, um, but I just think other classes, if you want to use this as a, as a support role, I mean, Templar is going to be better, which we're, which we're going to discuss. Um, I, I don't really know what Warden offers besides um, some like minor endurance, 
for your team uh, so you can get uh, more health. Um, you have Northern Storm, which is going to give everyone protection, you know, damage mitigation. So um, solo play, not so good, probably like a C tier. But when it comes to group play, it's very, very strong, probably between A and uh, the probably a plus so for that reason i'm going to put the magic of warden in uh, a tier for now just because of the simple fact that you can build it a lot of ways there's a, there's a dot builds and you can't play solo i mean don't get me wrong it's not like the worst when you go into battlegrounds but group play potential potential is really high so any class that can offer healing and damage mitigation in group play, I mean, that's that's gonna be a good class. So we're gonna put Magic Warden in A tier. All right, next, the Stamina Warden. So, um, I've <laughs> I've never been like, oh man, that Stamina Warden really showed me. Um, there are a couple people who can play Stamina Warden very, very well, especially for like Spin to Win bombings. I won't say bombings, but like with Play, play Break Spin to Win, but that does require a very specific play style and setup. Um, while it is pretty good in a group to get those set up solo play um it is better than the magica version I, I, I don't get me wrong okay but i will have to say that the the stamina warden it just doesn't offer any group utility um it's pretty much kind of like the the stam sword or the stam blade is like a solo dolo thing you're just in it to win it spin it to win it you know type of thing so for that reason i'm going to put stam warden and beats here um it's it's a pretty decent class it's a very fun class to play don't get me wrong so uh, when it comes to you know just kind of everything thought about yeah uh, definitely a b tier ranking for this one all right so let's hop into last but certainly not least the timbar the templar class already messing up my words I, I gotta wet my whistle here before we talk about this one boys all right so I'm just gonna say it, Stamplar is trash. Stamplar is, is just trash. I mean, Magicka just does everything better. Um, there's really no group utility with the Stamplar. Um, you're squishy as a Stamplar. Um, th that's all there really is to say about it. it. It's trash. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, maybe you are a Stamplar god and you know something that I don't, but never have I ever been like, man, that Stamplar really showed me. Man, that Stamplar, wow, look at that combo. Wow, look at that burst. It's always been a Magplar. So speaking of Magplar, um, oh boy. So if you thought Nightblades are bad, being a DK main, obviously Nightblades are pretty annoying, but Magplars are really, really annoying. Not only are they annoying to the DK class, but they're just annoying to any class in general. They have a relatively cheap, well, I say cheap purge, but they can spam purge literally off cooldown. The amount of AOE healing that this class has is absolutely phenomenal. The amount of 1v1 potential this class has is through the roof. You have like, your simple combo with the javelin changes to where you can no longer block javelin. Man, your burst combo is huge. You just line up a meteor into power of the light, jabby jab into a javelin and into Jesus beam. Man, if you're solo and you catch anyone out with that combo, they're dead. There's there's very little timing to where you can actually dodge that combo because what you have to do, you have to somehow preemptively guess when they're going to meteor you and you need to preemptively roll dodge the javelin and for you to get out of the roll dodge animation quick enough to block the meteor before they throw another javelin at you. OK, that is very, very difficult to do. Even for myself, I've spent many hours trying to test it in duels, you know, me and a couple buddies like I don't know how to dodge that combo um, unless the person initiating the combo really messes it up. Again, that's from a solo standpoint, like solo burst. I think it has the most powerful burst in the entire game when it comes from a 1v1 uh, standpoint. Now, with that being said, when it comes to group utility, again, this class does everything. Like it literally does everything in every single battleground I'm in, no one dies. And uh, any ball group, you want to have two or three Templar just, just spamming the, the rings or AOE healing, the blessings of protection, man. It's the smart healing is incredible in this game. The amount of overhealing is 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 dang near broken. It needs tuned down, guys. The the, the amount of, we're going off on a tangent here because it needs to be said. This class, I don't want to say it's ruined the game, guys, because like this this is like everyone like your support player. I mean, this is like the go to class. It, it, it is the king of support. Uh, it's it's a king of like pretty much everything in ESO at the moment. It's just because healing is outrageous. Healing, in my opinion, personal opinion, guys, there needs to be a cap if you are in any group bigger than two you need healing reductions on all of your abilities healing casted and healing received um what those numbers need to be i don't really know okay but 
the amount of cross healing, the amount of uh, cross group healing, the amount of overhealing. When you have three or four radiating regens going and you hit someone for a 20k whip and they instantly go back to up the full every 20k whip, it is something's wrong, man. It's something's wrong. And the only way to counter these ball, uh, the, these Zergs or ball groups with Templars is another ball group or, or very small bombing group, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's it's incredibly overtuned. Um, this this class in general, it's just, I won't say the class in general, I will say healing in general is overtuned and this class really excels at healing. Um, the fact that Zoss has determined that your spell damage and also your healing stacks from the exact same stat pool is stupid. It is stupid. You need to pick one. Your stat pool, your magic or stamina needs to determine your damage or healing. One of them, one of them, doesn't matter which one, and then your your spell and weapon damage, which needs to determine, I don't know, the damage of your spells, not the healing. The healing needs to come from your stat pools. If you do that, you will see a tremendous drop in healing, I assure you. The fact that you can stack everything into one stat pool, and that one stat pool makes you do more damage and more healing, which therein is more mitigation technically, that's not good. That's not good. Um, that, that That's just a core mechanic that the Templar can just abuse. Um, it's one of the very few classes that can do it very, very effectively. And until that meta changes, Templar is always going to be a meta class. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. And one more thing um, I want to kind of note is that you cannot, any other MMO I've played, um, you cannot balance the game evenly for PvE and PvP. You have to segregate the two. You have to branch them off. You need to have a PvE dev team to work on PvE checks and balances. And then on this side, you need to have PvP dev team working on PvP checks and balances. You cannot, they cannot coexist. That's why the game feels unbalanced at all times, no matter what you do, okay? That's that's how these metas arise. That's why some of the metas just, just don't change, right? So... I really do think Zoss needs to restructure the the balancing in ESO. Like you cannot like in Lost Ark. Let me just go on Lost Ark for a tangent. A Lost Ark has all the PVE stuff. As soon as you step into PVP, all these abilities change. And all these abilities change, and you could do the exact same thing in ESO. When Battle Spirit is active, your abilities change to this now. And there, there's like there's on the tooltips. There should be a divide in the tooltips. Hey, this is PVE tooltip, and hey. This is PvP tooltip. That's how the game needs to be balanced. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I know it's been like this for eight years and it's like reinventing the wheel at this point. But um, I truly think if you are able to divide ESO up in that manner and you have dev teams specifically for PvP and specifically for PvE, you're going to get much better quality game and much better quality experience. Um, so yeah that, that's the rant i wanted to go on I, I feel like all this has been said if you made it to the end of this this video man y'all thank you so much i really appreciate that i appreciate the view time if you don't mind please like the video i mean if you agree with uh, what i said here awesome but 99 percent of you guys are probably not going to agree with the way i have things structured here i mean that's awesome let me know down in the comments why you agree or disagree i would love to talk with you guys maybe you have some builds or maybe some advice for me that i just simply don't know Maybe I'm looking at this from an elitist standpoint, you know, maybe from a casual player standpoint, some classes are easier to pick up. And if you're a veteran player, maybe some classes are just better in general. So uh, let me know down in the comments on what you guys think. Again, this has been Horcrux. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.